welcome to the video trend. I will first start with introduce myself and the, and the guys. Uh, I'm Yonit Goldberg. I'm uh, working uh, with Limelight, but not only with Limelight. I'm doing uh, sales and business development for uh, many companies focusing on uh, digital media strategy, go to market and uh, business uh, development. Uh, so knowing the market and of course, as Didier mentioned, uh, working with Limelight, we understand that the video, we understand the market and, and we also happen to predict trends sometimes even uh, before uh, sometimes even before it actually happens. So if we speak about 2016, so uh, the people who know me, uh, the, the biggest trend was reduction. So uh, it was a reduction myself and uh, and also the market was consolidated on the one end, but on the other end there was uh, a lot of uh, conglomerates like Facebook, Google, Snapchat that decided to, to change the, the world. So we are looking on 2017. I want to introduce you the panel that we are going to speak about the trend. So we have uh, Yael. Yael Shafrir from uh, managing uh, uh, Middle East, uh, East Europe and Africa in Playbuzz. Eliran Ben Yehuda, country manager for Tabula in Israel. I'm David Doron from Sedato. Elad Mashir from Absalar. Okay, so talking about 2017, and we did a lot of preparation, uh, you know, for this panel. Uh, there is uh, two things that uh, we want to cover. The first time, the first thing is that. Uh, the giant like Facebook and, uh, and Google, uh, they don't want to dictate the market, however, with all the regulation, and not only the regulation, they, on, they're, they're, every morning they have new rule, they are shifting our industry from point A to point B, and it's shaking, shaking the industry, and it's give us sometimes a lot of headache. On the other hand, we have the new era of media, which has a huge impact on our day-to-day -day business. Th those of you who don't understand what is the, the new media, the new era of media, it's actually, it's, it's, a, new, it's a new method that the new media is a, a new approach to innovation, to personalization, to targeting that it's forced by the millennial and, and the new people. Because basically, uh, what was working two years ago, it's not on, working anymore. Uh, the, the millennia and the generation X and Y are more focused on recommendation, more focused on personalization, on targeting, and of course the new buzzword on attention and attitude. So I would like to start with you, Dvir. Uh, Facebook and Google are waving war on our market share, not only video, also all the market share, and they are drawing more and more, you know, warriors and, and regulation and budget. How does this impact the overall market? Excellent question. So, yeah, we all know Google and Facebook, and in some research I've seen uh, that uh, every marginal dollar, uh, of every marginal dollar, 85% go to Google and Facebook. And I think specifically in our industry, this is a situation that cannot sustain. Uh, no industry can sustain and be viable with only two players. And I think we're seeing pushback from both publishers as well as marketers. And uh, specifically from the publisher's side, I think uh, it's a moment of reckoning uh, because their whole business model is being threatened. Uh, and from our perspective, we're a video technology company. And uh, what we've seen is that viewing experience became a priority for publishers. And um, in the past, or actually still today, video is, is a strong revenue stream for them. Um, but they've stuck to conventional linear monetization techniques borrowed from the TV age, uh, more for interruption rather than acceptance and permission. And you spoke about generation X and Y and Z. Um, what I'm seeing is that the new tool in, in the fight against the giants is ad formats, ad experiences, and native. And we'll talk more about that. Elad? You're working in an attribution company that not only, you know, measure the application, also predict trends and uh, understand trends. So what's your point of view on that? So you were talking about regulations and, and barriers. Uh, I think that the market is actually becoming more mature. Uh, and, and Facebook and, and Google and companies like that are actually, uh, the main objective is, is putting the, 
the, the user in the front and making sure that is, it doesn't lo lose any interest in the platform. So I think that publishers uh, tend to, to uh, um, complain about uh, uh, inventory going down, but they, they tend to neglect so Baba. They tend to neglect the fact that that Sababa. So okay, you yeah, like this? Okay. So I think that that uh, publishers uh, tend to complain about the fact that that they are losing reach, but they, they tend to neglect the fact that uh, good content shine. So for advertisers, the 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 main objective is to make sure that the um, that the ads that they are showing and the, 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 what they are presenting to the end user is actually relevant as much as possible. Okay, Eliran, the same question for you. Yeah, so uh, I think microphone <laughs> uh, I think it's uh, Facebook and uh, and uh, and uh, I, I like to address Facebook first. It's it's a world garden basically, and we all know that in a, in a situation that we we know that. Uh, the commodity today in in our business it's attention, and uh, in in English it sounds it sounds even uh, even it makes sense. You say pay attention. You actually pay with your attention, uh, and and we see that um, in in many many um, plat other platforms uh, that in the open web web trying to uh, trying to fight with the publishers on those uh, trends. So um, to address your question, I think. Publisher understand that we need; uh, they need to have um, more collaborative uh, with uh, with ad tech companies and with other platforms in order to um, to fight this. Uh, this it's 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 a little, it's it's a war there out there. Uh, basically, it's uh, nothing like uh, like that before. And um, I th I think the trend is uh, that we see Facebook uh, getting more budgets and more budgets and. Uh, in the, in the other hand, we see also budget that shifts from Facebook to, uh, to platforms like Tabula and like others uh, because of the results, because of the performance, uh, because of the, uh, the service, because of lots of things that happens in those platforms uh, in the open web. Uh, I think it's super important for uh, to understand the situation and to uh, to address it, to address it in a, in a, uh, to pay the attention to this uh, situation in order to make sure that uh, publisher will survive um, and not stay in, uh, and not make sure that to all the audience to stay in Facebook. Yeah, El, you are a company that you know Playbus is doing a lot of with content. So how you address this? Um, I would say that uh, publishers and um, um, other um, companies that are uh, content oriented are looking for innovation. They are looking for new ways to uh, make the, the, their users excited, to make them come back for more, to make brands interested in, uh, in their platforms. So um, <clears throat> uh, talking about, content, about video content, I think we all try to address the shortening attention span. We all try to see how we deal with it uh, six uh, seconds in average, right? So we uh, try to come up with uh, ways to, um, you know, either to make it more personalized or to make it uh, more engaging other ways. And uh, I think the biggest challenge is uh, in video is to, f for both, for, for whoever is uh, creating content, is to really um, um, make users engage with it, either by interactive uh, uh, video or by uh, personalized video or other uh, ideas. And um, uh, to also um, see how people will want more to, to share this, uh, uh, vi this content, this video content, because uh, it's very hard to, uh, to fight uh, Facebook or to presume that it's uh, you know, not going to be part of the, uh, the game, a big part of it. So we might as well uh, collaborate with it. Great. Uh, one of 2016's biggest trend was the RTB programmatic. And uh, I want to ask you, Dvir, uh, what do you think going forward to 2017, uh, you know, will be the RTB technology, the next wave of innovation, and, and whether this will be as important as it was in 2016? Excellent. Um, RTB, or programmatic, um, is, is growing faster than anyone expected. Um, not just in video, but in video specifically, we're seeing a, a surge of uh, programmatically driven uh, media. Uh, it, we've just done a piece about that 
65% increase uh, from 2015 to 2016, and it's not slowing down. Uh, video in general is growing extremely fast. Um, but it's not without its challenges, and I think that uh, the majority of innovation we've seen in programmatic has been around pricing dynamics and audiences, and um, it's not enough for video. Video has inherent challenges in the way the format is built uh, that are preventing um, trading efficiencies from happening. I don't want to get too technical about that. Uh, and it ushers in a generation of, let's call this a meta-programmatic or a new age of, pro of programmatic. Um, some call this header bidding. Again, I don't want to get too technical here. Uh, others call it other things, but it seems that committing to a single platform for all your trading, is not, it, this age is going to go away. And it shifts the power more toward, towards the publisher's side, which is interesting. Um, and it also, create some sort of a threat on Facebook and Google, as we've discussed before. The other trend I'm seeing in, in terms of innovation or programmatic is uh, we all see some uh, aspect of native and content and the mesh between content and ads. Um, and this doesn't work well with any programmatic platform today. And it's a real challenge in creating scale for this industry in driving native content and native advertising in video programmatically to achieve scale. So that's where I'm seeing a lot of innovation going to happen this year. Anyone to, want to comment as well on that? Maybe you on the native? Yeah. So um, I think Convert Media just joined Tabula a few months ago, and uh, we already see um, more than 100 publishers um, working with the Convert um, Video Outstream platform. Um, it's all publisher from Tabula that um, managed to implement the the video widgets. So I see. I think. I, th I think you're right. So the scale is a, it was an issue, and uh, uh, I think the the, um, the next step is to see more um, acquiring companies of video uh, programmatic or video technology to join um, scale companies that have scale like Tabula or stuff like that uh, to, do, to, to make it even easier to implement the technology in larger uh, publisher and to get the scale for the video. So that's... Guys, Tabula is looking for m and I just noticed. Uh, Yael, what do you want to add? Because I know that PlayBuzz is a, is a heavy native player. Yeah, we're, um, we're doing both programmatic on our editorial pieces and we're doing native for other pub, uh, brands within uh, our domains and our assets within the publishers. Um, this whole business is scaling, we all know that. Um, we're um, also looking into scaling it by reducing prices. You talked about reduction at the beginning of the session, so I think... Uh, um, uh, Didier talked about uh, talked about um, um, 2020 being uh, like all video uh, oriented. So we're looking into mechanisms to uh, really reduce the production cost of video and make it like um, you know um, accessible for um, a lot more uh, companies. Um, so I, I believe that the key to success here is scaling for one and um, being like, uh, very targeted in order to, to increase CTRs. And um, maybe the third thing would be um, um, the, the data element, which will help us not only in the specific uh, uh, campaign, but also in the future, like the aggregated data that we gather from uh, uh, smart, uh, programmatic, and uh, native um, tools. Interesting. Elad, I want to ask you, you know, Apps Flyer today, uh, not only it's a big power to Israel, uh, you are also predicting trends in uh, mobile. Uh, I would like to hear your point of view on what's going to be the next big thing on 2017 for mobile. I'm not sure about the next, but definitely video is, is uh, becoming a very strong uh, uh, like we see a lot of videos in in our system, uh, we are issuing every every now and then, like every six months, we are issuing an index report showing all the networks that we are working with, and how good they perform in terms of either quality or uh, volume. Uh, and the last, and the first index that we actually issued, I was really really surprised with the networks that that we saw that there. Um, 
And, and it really took me by surprise because I was expecting to see the usual suspect. But what we saw, what we saw is that on the first places, there were companies like uh, Vangel, Ad Colony, Supersonic, uh, Chartboost, uh, Ablovin, all these guys that are actually, uh, their main business is, is rewarded videos. So we're seeing that rewarded videos are not just working uh, in terms of volume, but also in terms of retention. What we saw is that, again, companies like Aplovin and, and Ad Colony, when we looked at the retention, comparing to other companies, we saw that they really, really doing good, uh, doing well in terms of, of uh, engaging with the users and seeing that the user are actually sticking with the app. Uh, so video is actually is, is performing very, very well comparing to other uh, medias. Okay, thank you, Elad. Uh, the next topic that I want to address on the trend is, uh, and this is basically for you guys that deal with a lot of content, is the, is the strategy around video and content, because we all understand that content is going with video and video is going to content, and above all there is the monetization. And I think that this is another important aspect that it's going forward. What is the common strategy that you see and why it's not working and what we need to do, to do in order, you know, to do it different. So we're talking about uh, video on the content side, right? Not on mm -hmm. the programmatic. So I think if, we, if you're addressing what's not working, we're talking about six uh, uh, seconds in average per item, right? This is like the biggest problem. So I think like what we are trying to do, like our biggest challenge is making video interactive because users are already used to that, are used to uh, not only being passive users, but being uh, a part of the process. And by, by uh, making uh, videos interactive, we achieve two things. One is engagement. Uh, when people are involved with the content, they are more likely to share it, they are more likely to complete it, they are more likely, and we see it, uh, to spend uh, two and more minutes uh, per item. Like the average um, um, dwell time is 15 seconds, so this is a big difference. And the second thing is when um, uh, video is interactive, then it's also a data source. So it's not only a one-way um, you know, stream of uh, the video that is being sh uh, shown to the user, but also we get uh, the insights from the user. For example, uh, I don't know if we'll um, uh, show a video that's uh, divided into sections and we ask the users to start with whatever section is interesting for them, we will learn what's interesting for the user. And this is... Um, like I think that you know the key uh, to making video was uh, more successful. Elian. So uh, I think uh, first I, I totally agree, and uh, I think uh, we're talking about um, different thinkings. It's it's rethinking marketing because uh, we we were in a, in an era of uh, we have social, we have. Uh, um, programmatic, stuff like that, now we need to think in layers. And video is one of the layers that we need to think about. So what you need to, th to know about um, strategy and, and how to address, address uh, content strategy on video is to have a good story. So we see it if, if, it's, if, if you have a good story, you need to, t to tell it in, many, in multiple layers. So video is one of them. And if you don't have a good story, if you don't have a, um, a good, good funnel, let's talk about program in a very performance way, um, it won't work. It doesn't matter if you have the best technology or the best, um, uh, the best uh, um, uh, scale. It won't work if you don't have the, a good story. And uh, so I think marketers uh, will understand that they need to do several things. First is to try more story, to try to be more creative. We're talking about uh, video uh, marketing, and, and it's, 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 it comes with creative. It, it, it can go uh, um, without it. And second thing that I think, uh, because it's a new thing for many people, uh, and for the industry, uh, A-B test. So um, we see lots of A-B tests uh, going in our network uh, on the video, and not just on the video, I'm talking about content um, as, as, as a whole thing. Uh, it's more holistic even. Um, so if you do A-B test and you understand and you get more data about what your client likes, what the user that you want to engage with um, are more likely to read about or to watch the video about, uh, that's, that's the way to, to get scale, and that's the way to get uh, success on, uh, on anything, but also we see it in, uh, in video. So, and, and I think the thinking about layers is, uh, is the key. Um, I, I just want to explain it uh, in, in one minute. Um, when you when you look about um, 
stories that we share with uh, with other with, with we, when you are a marketer and you want to share your story, you can go to and, and put the same story in different places. But you need to think in another way. So if you go to Instagram, for example, and you put your video, it's supposed to be short, it's supposed to be, you need to address the, the, the specific layer, the specific platform. And we see lots of uh, uh, brands and uh, performance videos uh, agencies that still don't understand it and still take the same video to to multiple layers uh, platforms and try to work with it and uh, we need to understand that um, you need to adjust your video or your content to each platform to each layer we like to call it and then it it's supposed to start working it's supposed to you, you need to see better results and then to a b test the results and get better success then Thank you very much, uh, Eliran. Uh, I hope that you did take something very important that Eliran and Yael said, that this is the layer approach. So I think going forward to 2017, we will see a new layer approach toward the uh, advertising as well. Not only, you know, the, the content or the personalization or the targeting, there will be new layer, layer of attention, la layer of attitude, and, and this will, actually dictate uh, 2017 and this is by the way according to IAB new standard that we will speak uh, in moments about uh, the new standard of uh, attention and attitude so we will speak about it but before that I want to ask uh, the boys side uh, you know this is something that uh, really bothered me because <laughs> Um, it's the <laughs> <laughs> I'm, anyway, there is large conglomerate uh, companies like Google, Facebook, I will put Samsung and Apple, that they continue to create barriers uh, in order to utilize the, their data and their inventory. And, you know, what company like you or, or you know, in general innovation, uh, you, you have to compete with and, and what can be done to, to support this situation? Because I, I, I suspect that a lot of product managers that are in the audience ask themselves, you know, what can be done differently? How can we do it and what to do? You want to take it first or I? Um, it's an interesting question. Um, not not and, excellent, and this one. <laughs> it's not as interesting, yeah. Um, I don't have a slide, so it's not excellent, yeah. But uh, getting serious, uh, there, there are several aspects I want to bring forward in this, in this, uh, in addressing this. And uh, I think in one of the earlier panels, uh, someone asked, "So what is what is the Israeli angle here? So what is startups in Israel doing?" Um, and you know, we have tremendous competition here, the, the walled gardens of the big guys, and as you call them, the, conglo the conglomerates. And what we do best here in Israel, we find. The angle, we find the anomaly in the market, we find the crack to go into. And video is such a, an enormous place with so many cracks and so many inefficiencies. Um, and a company, I can only attest to, to Sedato, um, and, and we found a very big hole, a gap in the market and in terms of optimization of, uh, of video. And we've grown since then to do more things, but that was how we started. And um, I was reading um, Rubicon's uh, transcript of the, pr of the conference call they made. Rubic Rubicon is one of the early SSPs in the market. And when they started, they were a young, vibrant company innovating in a, in a new field. And they've become this conglomerate that you talk about. And their CEO openly admitted in that call, he said that we reached a premium position, very well entrenched in our customers' stack, and we were able to raise prices because of that. And throughout that process, they missed the market. The market moved. And now they're facing competition from smaller and nimble players, um, and they just downsized 20% of their company. So I think in ad tech, there's no... You know, there's no still period, there's no, you know, there's no safe harbor here. You always have to innovate. Uh, the innovations I'm seeing this year uh, are mainly associated around native, but not just. I think there are still a lot of technology barriers, specifically for video, 
the formats, the players, the devices, the screens, um, and it's still in progress and in flux. And uh, a lot of the challenges this year are going to be around how to solve this in order to gain efficiency and be able to drive video further. That's our angle. I'm going to talk about the other angle in terms of not, not displaying the ads, but what advertisers can actually do in order to overcome this. So you mentioned regulations and all this stuff. Uh, so the first thing that advertisers need to look at is optimization. And, and, and also publishers, when they sell their media, they need to take in, into consideration that the most important thing is, is, is the user retention and engagement. And this is definitely something that you need to look at. Like, if you will take a look at 2012, all advertisers care about was volume. Everyone was all about generating as much as insoles as possible. Uh, moving forward to 2016, 2017, everyone is actually looking at the retention. And uh, there are actually advertisers that are paying publishers based on uh, day one retention. If they didn't reach a specific amount of percentage, like specific percentage of retention, they will not pay the publisher or deduct something from their revenue. Uh, so it is all about optimization. So making sure that the audience that you're targeting is relevant one and, and that the users that you're targeting are actually going to be engaged with the app and, and measure in-app events uh, use an analytic platform, tracking solution, whatever that you can do in order to make sure that the audience that you are buying is a relevant one and, and that the advertiser at the end of the day, when he look at the data, it doesn't really care about how many installs you generated. He's, they are looking at the ROI. And the most important thing is that the traffic that you're generating as a publisher is, is providing the best ROI for the advertisers. This will allow you to continue on running the campaign and actually negotiate for, better, for higher CPIs or higher uh, CPC or whatever model that you're working on. Thank you, guys. Uh, Eliran, I want to, I'm going back to the new, the new media, the new era, because this will be 2017. I personally believe that uh, targeting and per personalization with unique content will be key trend. It's, we, we see that 2016 started it in 2017 with the layer and the attention, it's going that way. And in my humble opinion, and you see, I, I see a lot of companies getting harder and harder to, to reach consumer with mass media. What do you think is the best way for brand to reach audience effectively? And if you can share a case study, it will be also. Yeah, so uh, first, I think uh, the most important thing is to try because we are talking about new uh, new tools and new platforms. It's important for all the advertisers to try th new things and uh, to not be uh, in, in, in like, not think today they know everything. Uh, we also try to discover everything uh, by, by ourselves and uh, we, we try to uh, learn a lot from our uh, advertisers and our publishers. So I think, um, as we said before, A-B test and, uh, and optimization, it's a, it's a key factor in, uh, in those uh, things. I think uh, personalization, when you talk about personalization, so in Tabula we have, um, we know the personalization that means that uh, Yael yeah, is different than me and uh, I'm different from you need and, and that's for but um, we see personalization as a deeper personalization. So it's, it's like, in English it sounds better, it sounds uh, me and myself. Um, in Hebrew, it's aniva anochi, but it's 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 uh, not so you know it's not a common term. So me and myself means that I am a different person uh, from in in the morning and in the in the evening. In uh, when I come to the content, when I read the content from uh, Facebook or from Google or for direct to enter to the publisher content and read it, uh, we we act in a different ways. And I think uh, platforms today. Uh, should address it and should uh, make sure to uh, to uh, to get this data and expose it and make sure to uh, and to to get the, to the content to get the user to the content in the specific um, not only to the right persona but in the right situation. So that's one thing. I think um, a good case study that uh, I, I would like to share is uh, uh, something that happened in Israel in Hebrew uh, in our Hebrew network. Uh, a brand called Depend. It's uh, adult diapers. Um, so we thought it will it will get scale in desktop 
uh, and also the brand manager and also the media buyer uh, and the agency, we all said, okay, it's an adult diaper, so let's go on desktop. And uh, we start on desktop and it works really, uh, it, it didn't work. Um, and um, you need to say it. And um, the account manager uh, told, told the, the advertiser, let's try on, on mobile also. And we all said, no, it's not working. Mobile is not working. It's, it's an adult diaper. Why mobile? Uh, it's uh, usually on desktop. But we tried. And uh, it suddenly gets scale. And, and suddenly we got lots of conversion and lots of uh, user and, and lots of engagement. And uh, we, we investigated it. So the, re the result was that desktop is a super exposure for, uh, for each one of, of, uh, of the users. And when you, when, you watch, when, you, um, when you read content on desktop, you don't know who looks behind you. And on mobile, you can do it like this. And when you're talking about adult diapers, you don't want people to see what you are reading. And that was, that was our assumption in the end of the day. Um, we thought at the beginning maybe the, the, the children of the, of the adults buy their, their diapers, but it's not the case. They, they order it themselves on mobile. So, and it wouldn't happen, it wouldn't work if we didn't try, if we didn't, if we, didn't, uh, uh, if we haven't uh, uh, even get that chance of mobile to this campaign. So I think, you should try, you should uh, um, inspire from other campaigns and ask questions all the time. Yeah, El, same question to you, but I would like you also to address the audience because I know PlayBuzz yeah. also reach a lot of audience, so how you target them, how you personalize them, and, and if you can share a case study, it will be also very beneficial. Okay, first, just uh, if we're into technical uh, issues, it's uh, on the girls' side here. It's totally freezing, so if uh, you can do something about it, it would be great. Join the club, join the club. Thank you. <laughs> we, are st we are tough. Yeah, we are yeah, tough. yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, um, talking about targeting, also always uh, bring me back to this um, to the story about uh, the um, uh, U.S. people and the Russians going to outer space. And... Um, they, they wanted to invent a pen that's working uh, anti-gravity, and um, the Americans, I think, it was a thirty million dollars uh, invention that they uh, that they created um, uh, an anti anti-gravity pen, and the uh, Russian they brought a pencil. So we're kind of Russians uh, uh, on this. We, when we want to um, target a specific audience, we use the title, the headline, to target it. And uh, I will give a very simple example to, to demonstrate. Um, we did a campaign for uh, Kimberly Clark, uh, not for diapers, but for um, it, it was something to do with um, you, uh, a device you put on your uh, on your toilet, and then if your husband or your uh, partner does not uh, uh, close the the, the um, cover, then it, it beeps. Okay, so we, we were targeting only uh, women in relationships with men, and. The way we did it, we, we just, uh, it's in Hebrew, so I can sell it. We, we, we just asked, um, uh, like, what would, you, what would be, uh, um, um, uh, how's your, your man acting like, like, in a pretty bad translation, but this, this was the general idea. And we were talking about your man, and we, um, in this manner, we just targeted with women that are in serious relationship. And this is how we, we target first. Yeah, I agree with uh, El Iran. We, we choose the network on which we run and we, uh, and we do some experiments and we track them. Tracking is the key to, to, to being able to improvise and to, tr to try things. So we need to um, uh, track it in real time. And the second th uh, thing is just talk to the people you want to target. Okay. Uh I want to ask one question before we will take questions from the audience. Uh, I want that all of you will address something uh, very important. We'll start with Elad. Uh, based on your experience, what do you think company need to do to, do to maximize the video activity? Um, okay, so, so I think that people are actually looking at videos and, and some of them are actually adopting uh, videos from TV. Well, videos on mobile, especially on mobile, doesn't work like it works on TV. So first of all, for example, there's no sound. Um, uh, but, but I think that a lot of advertisers are actually working on one video and they think that 
this should be sufficient enough, just one video and that's it. Uh, video is very much similar to banners. You need to test a few, you need to prepare to work on a few videos and, and A-B testing and make sure that the right video is actually working. You need to uh, uh, do some A-B testing about, uh, on the end card and make sure that uh, specific users are uh, uh, reacting to specific uh, content differently. Uh, so this is one. Second is uh, to make sure that the video is not too long. Now I talked with, uh, I looked at our data internally and I talked with a few ad networks, including Facebook, for example. Um, and, and what we got is around like over 90%, over 90 seconds is, is way too long. No one will actually, it, was, it will be a waste of time in terms of the video. Uh, but I got a different uh, uh, stats from other networks claiming that 30 seconds is, is more than enough. So again, it's, it's, it's a lot about A-B testing and making sure that, that you're not uh, uh, preparing a too long of a video that no one will actually watch or get to the end of it. So. Dviv, and also, you know, because we have here a lot of ad network, I want you to address this activity, but also, you know, from demand and supply side. Good. So the two aspects I want to raise is one, um, video is now more than just video, okay? It's more than just pre-roll before video content. Um, and video ads can appear literally anywhere. And now it's a matter of optimizing the experience to the context, okay? So desktop, mobile, mobile web apps, uh, whether you're reading a long article, or whether uh, this appears, uh, in an interstitial as you move between one phase of the game or to another is a very different experience and I still do not see advertisers adapt to that level of experience. It's usually just you know replicating the same ad uh, everywhere. So that's something I expect to change specifically when you know measurement changes from just impressions to more uh, bottom funnel metrics. Um, and as to your questions, we do have a lot of ad platforms as customers uh, and publishers. And one of the challenges there is waste. There's a lot of waste going on because of technical mismatches and problems. Uh, one of the issues is, uh, is you know, out of every 1,000 potential opportunities for showing content or ads, um, only between 100 to 200 are actually being filled. and. Uh, our business is to make it bigger, a lot bigger, but I, I'm still amazed to see this is such a big problem in so many areas. Um, so there are systems and platforms out there that enable you to, to uh, optimize the technical aspects of driving video, programmatically and directly. And um, from everything, all the indicators I'm seeing is that 2017 is gonna be a dramatic shift uh, in, that, in that regard as well. To you, Elian, what do you think how you can maximize? Because I know that the Tabula put 2017 as a growth in video, how you see Yeah, so uh, first of all, to address it on the publisher side, um, I, th I think outstream video is uh, one of the key factors here in uh, 2017. Um, the, the video in the in inventory that publisher has today are pretty low, uh, and it's it's it's, you need lots of budgets in order to get more video inventory. And that's why we think uh, Outstream is the, it's a proper solution for, for uh, this kind of uh, problem. Um, so definitely Outstream uh, is going to get more scale and uh, we'll see more collaboration like we have with Convert, um, stuff like that going into market. Um, on the media side, what I think is the thing is you need to, to see two things that happen. So um, short video, I, I, I agree. Uh, it's, it's something that uh, we see also in uh, video platforms, but also in Tabula, in uh, our widgets, we have lots of campaigns that are uh, promoting video uh, in the widget itself. Uh, it's not like autoplay or something. You click on the widget and you get to a video page. But what we see in those kinds of campaigns, we see a different behavior of the, of the users between, let's say, if you put it as a pre-roll on, on uh, YouTube or in, uh, or in on feed, video feed on Facebook. When, you, the, when the user is asked for the content, is asking for the content, um, we see that the, the user is going to watch the video uh, 
even if it's one or two minutes video, we have uh, on average more than 90% of uh, users to get to the end of the video. When the user is uh, um, just get the video as a pre-roll, it's not he's not asking for it. He's just got to, to YouTube to watch some Coldplay music, uh, some cool new video, new clip, and then you go with the, with this pre-roll. It's annoying and it hit the skip button. Um, the campaigns that we run, uh, we had good campaign with Nespresso, we had good campaign with uh, Kimberly Clark also, um, and and it all were campaign, video campaigns. We see that um, campaigns that asking the user if you want to see the video, if you want to watch the video, click here, and then the user click by himself and get to a video page, is more tolerant to see a longer video. So that's something that uh, I think uh, advertisers need to uh, remember, and also, I think in the, in the advertising uh, world, uh, we'll see platforms that uh, know how to provide good video in, um, uh, in low budgets. Because uh, to, to get videos today, it's, it's a super expensive uh, um, process. And I think if we want to get scale, and the industry need to have scale with that, um, we'll have a platform that offers uh, good videos with a low budget. Yael? I can only agree to a lot of the things that have uh, been, been said here. Engagement, um, you know, um, considering the shortening the attention span, um, low budgets, uh, accommodating to the ecosystem uh, of uh, the website or, or the social platform where it's being uh, shown the videos. I can add to, uh, to that the, the need to innovate. Um, the need to be interactive in video, which is something that uh, we're, we're dealing with and there are other platforms and um, we should understand that uh, passive uh, consumption is something that's being hard for the user. And, um, and also it, it avoids, uh, like without uh, interactivity, we will not get data from the user. It, we, will only, we will only know if he's seen it, seen it or seen half of it, etc. cetera. And um, last thing maybe is, uh, in a video is uh, just really looking forward to uh, what customers uh, want, where, where they want to consume their videos, and targeting them in the right places, as actually Iran just said. Any questions somebody would like to ask this group of experts? I can't. Oh, yeah. I'll write a... Yeah, please. <laughs> video behaves very differently than uh, than display or literally any type of, uh, of ad or segment that you see out there, uh, primarily because the formats are still in motion, okay? The inherent formats uh, of video, and I'm talking about the MPEG-4, talking about vast VPAID and, and all that suite of uh, formats are still changing, are still adapting. There are still a lot of uh, holes in those formats. Um, and it causes, it's a chain of, of effects that ends at poor viewing experience to the user. Because we're always a, on a balancing act between enhancing yield and monetization on one hand to the publisher and to the whole chain in the middle. Um, at the expense of waiting for the best ad to arrive or the best content to arrive to the user. So that's a balancing act. And um, the solutions we see today for programmatic for video um, have been tailored specifically for pre-rolls that run on video content at the center of the screen, okay? what we call um, main video content. And video, the, the whole video ecosystem grew tremendously in the past two years, ever since Facebook introduced, or actually Instagram introduced the first autoplay video. Um, this literally changed everything. And now video can appear as outstream within an article, um, in an interstitial, in a banner, anywhere, and not just on a large player. And uh, the formats have not been built to support that effectively. That's why you see a lot of innovation around that. 
and that's going to continue uh, fiercely in 2017. And it's also shaking the incumbents of the programmatic video industry. Uh, and I expect you'll see a lot of changes. We for sure are going to work hard that you see a lot of changes. Another questions? Please. So I think uh, Tabula changed uh, the perception uh, in end of 2015. Um, we changed our, our way of thinking. Instead of being a widget company, we become a platform. And uh, we serve publishers with uh, many tools um, to address they need, their needs. So first of all, we have Newsroom. It's an editorial for the homepage. Um, it's, a, it's a tool that helps to uh, the editors of the homepage uh, A-B test their uh, title, th uh, thumbnails, and, uh, and, and get lots of data um, from who, who read your article. Second, we see um, we have native uh, platform that we helped uh, our publisher uh, sell uh, to their advertisers by themselves. Um, we have all the personalized uh, um, tools that we have. One of them uh, that I like personally, it's the share tools button. So when you, when you enter a page, we, Tabula can give, you, give the publisher a tool that understand if the user is gonna share the, the article or not share the article, and then to, uh, to provide a set of share tools uh, to the unique user um, to address his needs. If he's gonna share, we give him a big button. If he's not gonna share, we maybe uh, take off the share tools button uh, at all from the page. Um, we have many, many tools uh, to our publisher. I think uh, technology uh, on the, on the, of the big platforms right now is to serve the publisher and, and help them um, with, to, pr to preserve the open web against the um, fighting with 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 Facebook uh, going uh, bigger and bigger and uh, get more audience to stay on Facebook and to read the article on Facebook and not get out to the to the publisher site. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, the biggest uh, pain point of uh, publishers is the pipeline in the development department, and so uh, platforms like Tabula or like Playbuzz are helping them. Um, with like kind of outsourcing for their um, uh, tools for either uh, creating engagement, like we develop um, tools for publishers uh, to engage with their audiences, uh, stuff that they can uh, uh, develop themselves uh, maybe, but uh, not as well and uh, not as scalable. And on the other side, we create um, um, like uh, Tabula, uh, we create but our own uh, dashboards in which they can um, they can track their, their KPIs. We teach them how to do it. We actually train them to do this uh, way of thinking because it's not obvious for um, for publishers currently that um, they are uh, on constant need to really understand how much people are interested in their uh, content. Uh, what's the most interesting thing? Uh, thing what uh, kind of content is more shareable? What's not? You know, how do they get new users, etc.? And this kind of platforms and dashboards allow them to do that. Okay. Uh, as we are lacking of time, last question, and I want each of you to, to give me one trend that you think will dominate 2017. Yeah. Um, I would go for, uh, for innovation, for retelling the, the video story, for trying new ways that accommodate to the, to the environment where people uh, consume their video content. Um, uh, you, uh, up, sorry, I didn't get the name. You mentioned uh, the need to, to put uh, uh, subtitles because people are uh, uh, viewing the video on mute. There are a lot of uh, such uh, um, uh, f uh, things that we need to, to take into consideration when creating new formats of videos. Uh, the shortening attention span, et cetera, we talked about it. So I think that the key is like, um, like reformatting the video. Elion? Uh, so uh, definitely uh, autoplay. On, uh, so we, we saw that uh, later last uh, month, I think it was uh, Apple and Google uh, approved Opel autoplay with their new update. Uh, so it's going to be it's it's they're going to help this trend 
also to get uh, more autoplay videos on mobile. And uh, also I think uh, the content is going to be more creative. Um, we, we, we are right now, we already see um, like the tasty, tasty videos that uh, most of the brands uh, that I know in Israel or outside of Israel also uh, already implement to their uh, strategy. So we're going to see lots of creative get, uh, to get inside the, the demand and uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to flow the, the whole video trend. I'm going to be a bit contrarian here because we, we, we covered a lot of the trends already and I think and, and that question from the audience uh, made me think what, what, is, what do publishers really need? And I think that the trend that we'll see in 2017 is actually SaaS. There's a big talk about the convergence of MarTech and AdTech and I think uh, the, as the industry matures, uh, it's going to be very difficult to live off media and and taking a cut between uh, being another link in the chain. And uh, as, the, as the industry evolves and matures, uh, we'll see more and more SaaS offerings based on technology and not on the media or the performance metrics that go uh, from hand to hand. And um, I'm seeing a lot of innovations on that, on that front as well. Um, so what... What we see as a trend right now is, is mainly retargeting. Uh, everyone is talking about retargeting for the last four or five years, but recently, for the last year, we are seeing retargeting, scaling up. We see more and more networks getting into this space. We see more and more advertisers less interested, less interested about, about the in-stores, but, but retaining their current users and, and engaging with them as soon as they actually download the app. Uh, so definitely retargeting. Not sure how exactly is it go it's going to work with videos, uh, but I'm sure that you guys are actually going to find a way. Okay, so uh, I will tell you my point of view and we will summarize. I think that uh, the biggest trend for 2017 will be the new media. Uh, it's the personalization tar targeting and above all attention. IAB has come out uh, with a new trend that called the uh, attention that replace the viewability and, uh, and a lot of uh, brand uh, verification company like GeoEdge, like Media Trust, like Moet, like Integral Ed Science. And, and I think that, that all of us will be affected from, from the attention layer that uh, what actually happened, not only while I, I watch this ad, what happened before and after, what happened after this social media and after. So I thank you everybody for uh, listening to us and thank you very much to my group of experts. And uh, I wish you all a great 2017. Thank you.